Sonic the Hedgehog was one of the biggest icons in gaming, so the complete absence of a traditional Sonic platformer on the Sega Saturn wasn't just baffling. It was one of many abysmal business decisions that led to Sega falling far behind its rivals. But by the fall of 1999, Sega had dusted itself off, charted a new course, and was ready to fire on all cylinders in one last desperate attempt to climb back to the top. It was a little inspiring and a little scary just how motivated the company seemed. But it was a great time to be a Sega fan. Sega had learned its lesson and would bring its beloved mascot exactly where he needed to be, to a glorious gaming device that had one shot to make a name for itself. I speak, of course, of the Neo Geo Pocket Color. Aw, yeah! What do you mean you've never heard of it? This thing is awesome! It was released by SNK in 1999, and not only was it in color, it was 16-bit. And instead of a D-pad, oh, this wonderful, beautiful, clicky stick. It's like a tiny digital arcade pad. You know, sometimes you might just look at something and maybe it doesn't look awesome, but if you've played with this thing, then you know what I'm talking about. It's the clicky stick. It's the it's clicky, clicky stick. stick. The system had tons of great fighting games, fun arcade ports, a built-in horoscope, and 40 hours of battery life on two AA batteries. SNK was going after Nintendo's Game Boy Color, but that system was still based on tech that was over a decade old. The Neo Geo Pocket could run circles around it, yet it was priced the same as the Game Boy Color, at $69.95. Sega's Game Gear had found some success in the early to mid-90s, but the company conceded the handheld market to Nintendo when they decided to go all-in on the Saturn. So by the time SNK made a move to take on the Game Boy Juggernaut, it only made sense for Sega to partner up. I mean, it's not like the VMU was competing with the Game Boy. Although the Neo Geo Pocket could actually link up to Sega's Dreamcast with a handful of compatible games. Works a lot like what Nintendo would do years later with the Game Boy Advance. Perhaps best of all, this partnership meant that SNK would get to borrow Sega's star player, Sonic Pocket Adventure, hit the shelves in November of 99. I guess I should start with this more gangly, green-eyed Sonic. I'll talk a lot more about this design when I actually get to Sonic Adventure, but for now, I'll just say that Sonic Pocket Adventure is notable, and even appropriately placed in this series, as it's the closest thing we have to any kind of on-screen transition from classic to modern. It's fairly obvious that Old Green Eyes was implemented fairly late in development. There are beta screenshots that show a black-eyed classic Sonic, and a few of his in-game sprites still switch to the old style. Eggman, meanwhile, spends most of the game in his classic getup, but when you reach his base, he switches to his adventure gear. But enough about the clothes, let's talk about the game itself. The speed, the momentum, the physics, the multi-tiered level design, all the familiar elements are here. Actually, like, really familiar elements. Like, uh... That, that's that's literally Casino Night Zone. Pocket Adventure is an odd mix of the Genesis games. The first stage is Neo South Island Zone. It looks like Green Hill, but it features level gimmicks from Emerald Hill. From there, the game follows Sonic 2 for the majority of its run. Secret Plant? Chemical Plant. Cosmic Casino? Casino Night. Sky Chase? Well, okay, that one's still Sky Chase. Then Gigantic Angel mixes things up again as it looks like Scrap Brain, but has gimmicks from Metropolis. So the graphics and tropes are from Sonic 1 and 2, but the music, bizarrely, and probably due to dreams come true, is mostly derived from Sonic 3. This mix of styles and themes could be kind of disconcerting for someone as familiar with the Genesis classics as I am. But you know what? The songs actually do fit pretty well with each act, and somehow it just comes together and works. Plus, it's honestly really cool to see the Genesis zones like this. It's kind of the opposite of what Sonic Generations would do, bringing classic stages into a scaled-down fidelity, and remixing the old songs into a chiptune format. And the generation's comparison holds, because while the stages and songs are rehashed, the level design is not. Now, although Yuji Naka and Sonic Team did oversee development, this game was designed by SNK. And yet the level layouts are actually really solid. It stands in something of a middle ground between Sonic 2's speedy linearity and Sonic 3's complexity. Now, it's not as polished as either of them, but let's face it, Sonic level design can very easily go wrong. And it's impressive just how cohesive everything is. It strikes a good balance, and there are even areas where coming in with a lot of speed rewards you with a faster, higher path. That's a cool little touch that the Genesis games didn't do very often. The bosses are also new, and they follow similar conventions. There are cool little tricks to a lot of them, and I actually didn't know until now that you can stand on the explosions in this fight to finish Eggman off a lot faster. Knuckles is even one of the bosses, and he's a lot more aggressive than he was in Sonic 3. <laughs> I love the little cutscene afterward.
For Chaos Emerald collecting, Pocket Adventure brings back the half-pipe special stages. But they get a lot more challenging than Sonic 2's ever did. I thought it might just have been the smaller screen, but no, these really are tough. I never even got all the emeralds until this video. Not that I had a whole lot of incentive. Pocket Adventure is part of a long, unfortunate trend in Sonic games, wherein Super Sonic was only playable in a special boss level at the end of the game. This is a little more excusable in the 3D games, where it'd probably require a lot more testing, but when invincibility and speed-up monitors are already fully implemented, it just seems like an oversight in 2D. At least there's some in-universe explanation for it. You'll get six emeralds from special stages, but Eggman steals the last one from Knuckles, and uses it to power his machine in Last Utopia. If you break the emerald off and grab it, that's when you'll go to chaotic space and get the true ending. If you're a fan of Sonic CD-style exploration elements, Pocket Adventure has you covered. There are tons of puzzle pieces scattered in some really esoteric locations. Getting them lets you unscramble pictures. I was never a big fan of this when I was younger, but they actually led me to some pretty awesome bonuses and shortcuts when I was trying to find them. There's even a two-player race mode, which I sadly never got to play, because nobody else I knew had a Neo Geo Pocket Color. And that was kind of the problem. Nobody bought this thing. I got the system and the game for my birthday on May 25th, 2000. Two weeks later, SNK would recall all of its US stock to be flashed and resold in Asia. And about a year later, shortly after the Game Boy Advance hit the market, the system was discontinued entirely. In any era, trying to compete with Nintendo in the handheld market is going to be like pushing a boulder up a hill. But the Neo Geo Pocket Color was a great product at the worst possible time. Now, there were other factors in the system's failure. SNK made some mistakes, but even if they'd done everything right, the fact is, the Pokémon craze was at its absolute apex in 1999, and that made the Game Boy untouchable. I was disappointed at the time that a system that I'd just gotten was already dead, but looking back now, I am so glad I had a Neo Geo Pocket Color. Back then, it was wonderful just to finally have such a close approximation of the Genesis gameplay on a handheld. And to this day, it's a really fun title with an interesting history and a unique aesthetic. All in all, Sonic Pocket Adventure is an impressive, rock-solid game that every Sonic fan should try, especially if you're a fan of the classic series. And hey, April Fools. We'll get to Sonic Adventure over the summer, but I thought it'd be fun to take a look at another piece of gaming history. I hope you enjoyed the episode in spite of it perhaps not being what you thought it'd be. If you did, hit that like button. If you didn't, pretend you're doing an April Fool's prank on me and hit the like button anyway. Oh, you got me! And a big thanks to my buddy Jonathan for letting me film his impressive Neo Geo collection and beautiful custom Dreamcast. Thanks to him, I finally got to play Versus Mode. Share the video, check out my other episodes, like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter, and if you keep critiquing, I'll keep geeking. Thanks for listening.